Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. In this episode, I am going to level sand, polish sand, and hopefully buff the clear coat finish on my six string multi-scale fan fret guitar that I've been building. Now, as you know from watching previous episodes, the finish on this proved to be a little bit of a challenge. This is actually the second attempt at applying the finish. In the first attempt, what I did was I sprayed down multiple coats of Crystal Lac Bright Tone Instrument finish, and I did, I think it was a total of 12 coats in one spraying session. And I did that by spraying a coat and then drying it with a hair dryer and then spraying the next coat. And I did all 12 coats in less than an hour. Then I let the guitar hang up and dry and cure for about a month, four weeks. I then proceeded with the level sanding and polish sanding, but I used a wet sanding technique. And unfortunately, what happened was wet sanding so many coats that were applied in such a short period of time, the clear coat ended up softening. And when I set it down on a work surface, the texture of the surface that I laid the guitar onto imprinted into the surface of the guitar. So I decided to strip off all the finish and start over. And I applied a fresh application of the dye and the grain filler then I followed it up by applying my 12 coats of Crystal Lac Bright Tone. However, instead of applying those all in one session, I would spray a coat, let it dry for several hours, then spray another coat. And then I continued that way until I had applied all 12 coats. So it took three or four days to apply all my clear coats. Then I let it dry and cure for several weeks. So now I'm ready to do the level sanding and polish sanding again. But this time, instead of using a wet sanding technique, I'm going to go back and use my dry sanding approach that I've used before. However, I've modified it slightly because over the years I've developed some new techniques based on the type of products that I'm going to use. So let me kind of show you the products that I'm going to use and we'll proceed with the initial level sanding followed by the polish sanding. Okay, so in order to be successful at dry sanding a clear coat finish, you need to use very high quality sanding abrasives. And over the years, I've tried a lot of different modern high-tech sanding abrasives, but the products that I have found that work the best by far are products from Eagle Abrasives. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can go check out these products yourself. But I'm using their Told Cut products, I'm using their Super Acelex products, and I'm using their Super Bufflex products. These are all manufactured in Japan and are a very high quality sanding abrasive, very high tech. However, I use them a little bit differently than what the manufacturer uh, designed them for. These are actually intended for sanding clear coats on automotive finishes, but they work extremely well on guitar finishes as well. And the products that I'm going to be using specifically, first of all, it's important to understand that I separate my sanding approach, my finished sanding approach, into two different levels. The uh, initial level sanding and then the polish sanding. With the level sanding, what we're trying to do is get the surface of the clear coat sanded absolutely level. There can be no high spots, no low spots. Um, you know, we try to eliminate uh, orange peel and that sort of thing. And to do that, I have to sand with a very hard sanding block. And I try to start out with the finest grit that I can get away with. So what I'm going to be using is this product called Toll Cut. Now Toll Cut comes in a variety of grits from 800 all the way up to 3000 grit. It's also available in different sizes. You have the full sheet like you see here, and this is just this full sheet. And it also comes in 
these smaller sheets. These are pre-cut and you can use these on the hard rubber blocks that come with the toll cut. Uh, there's basically two different, well there's one, no there's two different size blocks. There's the smaller size, a slightly longer size, and then there's these rounded or sort of, it's like an airfoil shape which you can use on curved surfaces. And then it also comes with a sheet that is a longer cut piece. So what I like to do is I like to use the full sheet in 800 grit to start my leveling process. And I have a hard block of wood which is half the size of one of these sheets. So what I'll do is I'll cut this sheet down to fit this block. And that's what I'm going to use to do most of my initial level sanding on the flat hard surface. But then for some of these curved surfaces or angled surfaces, I like to use a flexible sanding block. And what I use are these rubber erasers that you can purchase. You can buy these online. Um, I'll see if I can find a link on Amazon and I'll post it down below. Uh, but I get mine at the dollar store, which is just down the street from where I live. And then I can take these rubber sanding erasers and I can chop them up into sizes that work. So I've got this size cut to the same uh, width as this toll cut. So I can use a, a part of that sheet and then I can use that to sand in these curved areas and I can flex the sanding block to fit into those areas. And it works really well. Now in some of these smaller areas, it can be a little bit more of a challenge to get in there. So um, I will actually use one of the smaller uh, toll cut pieces on a smaller rubber eraser so that I can get in there and sand those smooth. Um, but I'm only going to use the toll cut in 800 grit to do that initial level sanding. Once the surface is completely level, I'll then switch to the Super Asilex. And then I will use just the sanding block that comes with it and I'll use that. And what I'm doing at that stage is I'm polish sanding. The 800 grit was the level sanding. The polish sanding is with the Super Asilex and I'll start with 1000 grit and work my way all the way up to the uh, 1500 grit. Then I'll switch over and use the Super Bufflex and I'll sand from 2000 grit all the way to 3000 grit. But what I'm doing when I'm using the Super Asilex is with each grit I'm trying to remove the sanding scratches left by the previous grit. So I'll start with 1000 grit, then I'll switch to 1200 grit, and I'll sand with 1200 grit until I've removed the 1000 grit scratches and replaced them with the 1200 grit. Then I'll move up to 1500, then 2000, um, and then I move through the Super Bufflex to uh, take those sanding scratches all the way down to 3000. At that stage, I can take it to my buffing machine and buff it up to a high gloss finish. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the initial level sanding process. I have got my sanding block ready to go. I've attached my piece of 800 grit Tolex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin the process of level sanding the surface. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this shiny surface and as we sand it's going to become dull. But wherever there are low spots, those will remain shiny. And you'll be able to see that as you're working. So the goal is to try to make the entire surface a uniform matte sheen with no shiny spots left. Now the key to success in dry sanding is that you need to keep your abrasives clean. So periodically as I'm sanding I'll stop and I've got this strip of carpet and what this actually is is one of those floor dusting pads. I picked this up at the dollar store. Um, but you can use just any piece of carpet. I also have this strip of carpet here. And all you do is simply wipe it off periodically to clean it. And then every so often I'll take a tack rag and wipe off the surface. And then I'll check the surface to make sure 
that I am reducing those little tiny shiny spots and replacing the entire surface with a nice, uniform, consistent, flat, dull sheen. Once I've achieved that, I'll know that that area is finished. And I typically like to work in small sections. So I've divided this top up into quarters. So I'll start down here in this lower corner and then I'll work my way up. And I like to use a circular sanding stroke as I'm working because it's faster. When you sand back and forth in a straight pattern, that typically will take a lot longer. And during the level sanding process, it's gonna take uh, quite a bit more time than any of the other sanding uh, abrasives. That initial 800 grit leveling process is the most time consuming. So once I get through that and start doing my polish sanding, that will go much faster. But to try to speed up that leveling process, I'll use the circular sanding stroke. Now it's important to use a hard sanding block when you're doing this initial leveling. If you're using any kind of a soft rubber or foam, it's gonna to conform to the surfaces that you're trying to level and you're never really gonna get the surface level. As a result, later on when you buff it up to a high gloss shine, you'll notice that the reflections of light or anything that's reflected in the surface will look like it's, um, it's gonna look rough and jagged. This, the reflections won't be sharp and crisp, but by using a hard block, you sand those high spots down and get them level with the low spots so that um, you get a nice, perfect mirror-like reflection. But as the sandpaper starts to load up with the sanding residue, I'll stop and wipe it off. And then I'll take my tack rag and wipe off the excess. And as you're working, you'll start to see where the surface is, is getting level because that's where it's dull and flat matte in its sheen. And wherever it's still shiny, those are the low spots. Now as I hold this guitar body up to a bright light, you can see where the surface has been sanded level and where it hasn't. Wherever there is a shiny surface, that's, that area has not been sanded. So in this area where I'm working, the flat matte sheen indicates what has been sanded down and those shiny spots are the low spots. And I still have to continue working this area until this entire surface is that same flat matte sheen. This is what the surface I just level sanded looks like after I have finished with the 800 grit. It has a very um, noticeable matte sheen to it compared to the other areas which have that shiny textured look to it. So the leveling process on this section is now finished and I can move on and continue leveling the rest of the front. Then I'll do the edges, the beveled edges, the sides, and the back using exactly the same process with the 800 grit. Now another cool way to use these products to level sand the surface is to actually start out with the Super Asilix 360 grit. And what I do is I wrap it around a hard wooden block and then all I'm trying to do here is just do an initial flattening It'll look like it's completely flat once I'm done with this, but it actually isn't. It'll be the, the uniform matte sheen, and I won't see any um, shiny spots. However, reflections will still look jagged. So what I'll do is I'll take the 800 grit toll cut, and I'll use that to do the actual uh, surface leveling and that will get the surface so flat that reflections will appear sharp and crisp but starting out with this 360 grit first and doing this initial flattening 
will make the process go quite a bit faster than just starting out with the toll cut 800 grit to begin with. And then every so often, you want to stop sanding, clean off the surface, and then hold the guitar up to a bright light so that you're looking at it at a low angle. And what I'm looking for are reflections of the light fixture in the surface that are sharp and crisp and not jagged. Now here's a tip for you. The easiest way to level sand the surface actually starts out before you ever apply any finish. You have to make sure that the raw wood is sanded to perfection. You don't want any high spots or low spots in the wood because those are going to transfer up through the finish and it's just gonna make the process of level sanding that much more difficult. So make sure you sand your raw wood to perfection before you even start to apply the finish. Now you're probably wondering, how do I deal with edges, corners, these angles and these curved shapes? Well, it's the problem is you can't use a hard block like I did on the top surface. Um, they won't conform to curves and, and things like that. But when I am sanding with the hard block on the surface, it doesn't wrap over these edges. It stops short. So I have an area right around where this uh, beveled edge meets the top where there has been no sanding action whatsoever. So I'm safe there. But now I'm going to proceed with sanding this beveled edge all the way around followed by the sides. And I want to be very careful about how much sanding I do to this rounded um, edge here. Because if I'm not careful, I'll sand through. But also remember, I've got 12 coats of crystal lac on here. So I've got a fairly thick top coat. But what I'm gonna do as I sand this is I'm going to use a, the 600 grit super acylix instead of the 800. And I'm just gonna be using my little uh, rubber giant eraser and wrapping the super acylics around it. And then I'm just gonna sand pretty much as I normally would. And I'm still not really touching this edge here or this edge here. I'm just focusing on this area here, the bevel itself. And I'll work to get that level. And then once I've got it level, I can then gradually sand over this rounded edge. And I just wanna blend the two together, the two surfaces, this matte surface with this matte surface. So I'm just trying to remove some of the shiny spots, but I'm not gonna to linger too long where the edge is. Because if I do, then I do run the risk of sand through. And I may not sand through now, but as I work my way through the grits, I would eventually, there's a potential to sand through. But it's important to understand too that once you've got this edge sanded smooth with the 600 grit, you don't have to sand it with every grit following this all the way up to 3000. It just really isn't necessary because the process of buffing will take care of that. So we just want to get the texture in the clear coat removed from that edge. Okay, so the 800 grit level sanding is now finished and I'm ready to move on to the next step which is the polish sanding. And I'm gonna start with 1000 grit super acylix and I'm just using a Super Acelix interface pad. And it's just a matter of sanding back and forth using light pressure. 
and that's all. And people often ask, how long do you sand with each grit? Well, it's important to remember that all I'm trying to do here is remove the scratches left by the previous grit, which was 800. So I'm replacing the 800 grit scratches with 1,000 grit scratches. Then I'll replace the 1,000 grit scratches with 1,200 grit scratches, and then I'll replace those with 1,500 grit, and I'll continue up through 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 grit. That's as far as I'll go. So since I'm only trying to remove the scratches, it doesn't take very long to do that. So I just want to make sure that I get good coverage over the entire surface, all the edges, all the sides, the back, everything. And I want to gradually improve the surface quality from 800 grit to 1000 grit. So it really won't take very long to do this. All right, guys, well, I've finished with polish sanding using the 3000 grit Super Asilix. So now I am ready to take the guitar body over to the buffer and then buff it up to a high gloss shine. Now, one thing you'll notice when you're polish sanding, every so often you'll stop and you'll want to look at the surface uh, against a bright light so that the surface is at a low angle to your eyes. However, as you move through the grits and, and proceed towards 3000 grit, you can actually start to lower the guitar uh, at more of a, a steeper angle to your eyes. And you can still see the reflections because you're polishing the surface. 3000 grit is extremely fine and it's going to leave a very fine scratch pattern that um, you can't even see the scratches with the naked eye. But what you can do as you're, as you're working through the grits is you can look at the surface and you'll notice the quality of the reflection. If it changes at any part or any section of the surface, and if it's not as uh, consistent, you'll know that those areas that aren't as uh, reflective still haven't been sanded as thoroughly as they should be. And that's just a way that you can gauge your progress. So like I said, now that I've finished with the 3000 grit, I can head over to the buffing machine and buff it up to the high gloss shine. However, I'm going to do that in the next episode because this episode is getting fairly long owing to the fact that the process of level sanding and polish sanding is quite detailed and there's a lot of information that I wanted to share. Well, I want to uh, do the same thing when I buff the guitar. I want to uh, provide the same level of detail and information. I want to explain the machine that I use, the wheels that I use, the buffing compounds, and the technique I use to buff the surface. So I'm going to devote an entire episode for that. So uh, in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video and got anything out of it, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. That's a great way to show YouTube that you support my channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you'd like to take your support to the next level, you can always visit my eGuitar Plans website or my Highline Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And any purchase you make there is going to help support this channel. And you can buy plans for building guitars as well as the tools that we use to make guitars, like my buffing machine. And um, that's going to help to uh, support the channel since I don't offer a Patreon page or uh, channel memberships or anything like that. So uh, that's one way you can help support the channel. And if you want to keep it simple, you can click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. At any rate, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have any comments or questions, post them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And remember, if you click the thanks button and leave a tip, 
and then include a question with it, I will definitely answer your question. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more future guitar building videos.